Thank you. I'll leave it to you. Well, thank you very much, Rita. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining uh, me um, yes, today. So in the States, it's a sunny day, which is you know, very nice. So yes, we are here in my studio. So I live actually just outside of Philadelphia and my studio is in my house and it's actually in the basement of my house. But I'm, I'm very lucky when I found the house. I really, at that time, I, when we moved here, it was actually eight years ago and I had two young children, not too young, but going to one going to, so sorry, I don't know the difference uh, between UK, America, US and French, but definitely uh, one was 11 years old and one was uh, six. So they were still young and I wanted to find a place where I could have my studio in my home. I find it, you know, quite convenient to do it that way. And we were, you know, lucky to find a house with a big basement. So I, we are actually in that basement, but I've got some direct light because I've got a door and a window opening on the outside, which make it quite convenient. So, um, so yes, so thank you for, for joining today. I hope you will, I have a very strong French accent, so I hope you will under, understand me, I will try to speak slowly. So as we Rita said, yes, we met, <laughs> I met Rita and Kate at the finissage of the Crawl exhibition last month, I think it was in February. February or late June, I don't remember, late January, sorry, I don't remember. And it was super nice to um, see them in person as you know, I'm quite far from London. <laughs> and uh, so a little bit of my background. So I grew up in Paris. I studied uh, fan art in an art school in Paris. And actually also grew up in a very artistic family. My dad is a painter, a sculptor, and he's doing uh, some uh, mobile uh, artwork. And my mother used to work in the um, textile industry and uh, uh, switch after into, um, which I don't know if there's a word for that, but she was working with architecture firm uh, around all the color chart of buildings, etc. So I think it's a job now that most of the architects or interior designers are doing, but at that time in the 70s, 80s, it was still a specific work. So I was definitely surrounded uh, in my childhood and still now, but with um, my dad artwork, uh, basically playing in his you know, studio and going to his exhibition openings, but also going to museums with my family. And it definitely um, uh, had a very strong impact on me. And we are a family of four uh, siblings. I've got four siblings, but I'm the only one who definitely pursue uh, a career into the art world. And I actually went to uh, my dad's school. So that was quite, quite funny. <laughs> Years later, I, I applied to that school and it was at that time, uh, you had to apply for a, a competition. It was a portfolio submitted but also you had to go for one day and do kind of like kind of pass a test in drawing and painting etc so I prepared a four year to do that and I was accepted in that school and decided to just go for it so it was a degree in four years and I had a great degree in I obtained a degree in uh, fun art painting and it's where I discovered uh, itching and printmaking and then I continued with the second degree in textile design. So I started my career mostly as a textile designer. I worked first with a fashion, into fashion in this industry. Then a couple of years later, I went into home interior design and I was pretty successful in my work, but I was definitely missing the time to, um, to work from my own artwork, to really, you know, develop some work that I always developed some work on the side, but never, never had the time to basically show it, exhibit, or just make the connection with other artists. So I decided before the age of 30, I guess it was 27, 28, there were some difficulties in the company I was working for. So I I decided to quit uh, my, um, my full-time job and um, just to become a full-time artist. I guess growing up in an artistic family and having a dad who was a full-time artist um, definitely helped me because it's quite, you know, it's quite a big, uh, a big step forward, but I made 
it. And, and um, since I'm super happy, I've done it definitely. And so I just kept some freelance work on the side to just basically provide uh, the bill. At that time, I had a wonderful studio in the um, east side of Paris. If you know Paris, there's a big cemetery called Le Père Lachaise. And I was living very close to that area. And I was basically into, I was renting an artist studio that the city of Paris provides for their artists. So it's a specific program. It is still on actually now when you have to apply for a studio and you have a very low uh, rent and you can live in an amazing artist studio with, you know, high ceiling, great light. So I was in that studio at that time and this is what it's really pushed me to uh, quit my full-time job to definitely pursue a, a full-time career artist. And when I've done that, I earn a prize for my work. And with the money, I bought an itching press. And so I was able to print and, and to start to um, navigate my way through uh, the artistic community in Paris. And I was really blessed with exhibitions. I had gallery representation at that time uh, in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. You know, it really was really, really, really good. And then I met my husband. And that's another story. And my husband is actually British. But we met in France, and at the time we were living in France, but, um, but very soon in his career, in an, he had an opportunity to work for a big international NGO called Save the Children, that we might know about. And we had to actually move back to London um, because the main office was in London. We didn't stay very long in England. I had my son just uh, before we moved to London. I stayed a couple of years outside of, um, in the, uh, not far from uh, Brick Brixton, so on the South Bank of London. And it was, it was great. I was able, at that time, we went to a big apartment. Uh, I was able to uh, ship my studio from France to London. It was a big change for me anyway, because I had a newborn baby. So I knew that I could don't work the same way. Uh, but um, I was so much into my work and London in Paris is so close. I kept all my contacts in Paris and I was able to, to do some travel back and forth with Eurostar between the two cities. So I was basically working few times. I was working less because I had to take care of my baby boy, but I was still working few days a week and be able to exhibit in um, Paris and at the same time continue to make connection in London. And I had some few exhibition in London and then um, with gal galleries and, uh, and fortunately Artcam wasn't existing at that time. It would have been great. And uh, my husband was with his job called to work, um, to travel with his work and to um, work in different parts of the world. So um, two years after we moved to London, uh, we suddenly took, I would say, the road to Southeast Asia and we moved to uh, Southeast Asia and after different countries. So that's a very long story. I would just uh, what I want to say, it's my, definitely my life wasn't necessarily shaped at the beginning. And I, I would say if I will, if someone would told me, we have told me, uh, when I was in my 20s that I will marry just before my 30s and and soon after to start to travel the world I'll have been I would have been surprised maybe I would have loved because I'm really really French <laughs> and I was quite happy with my work and my studio so that was definitely a big thing for me but you know you can do anything for love you know what I mean <laughs> So I definitely follow my husband in his career development. But the beauty with that is it's also developed my own career and it definitely shaped my work and my art practice. So having to, to quit everything, to leave everything behind, the comfort of my studio, the comfort of my life, to go to an unknown place, an unknown culture, definitely open my curiosity towards the world and, and, and definitely shape the way I am today, but also how I'm working and my different series of work. So I'm, 
I left um, I left England. I was into a very I'm sorry, I won't have examples to show you because I sold most of, most of them and it was in 2000, 2004. I was in London in 2004. Yeah, 2004, 2005. I was working on two different series. And, and the way I was working with, with etching, I never found myself very traditional into the technique. I'm really more uh, drawn into more contemporary and, and trying to, uh, yeah, contemporary etching technique or intiglio technique. Uh, when I say printmaking, it's a large word, but I'm really more into, I'm using mostly my etching press. I'm working mostly, yeah, really print by hand or printing with, with my prints. But I really love to explore different techniques. I like to mix different medium, different ways of working, so I definitely train in a very traditional way, working in Tiglio, working with varnish onto the plate. Is there some printmaker, printmaker here that will understand me? But working with, um, uh, which is the word in English, we say aquatinto. In, uh, so I, uh, sorry, I, uh, suddenly I don't have the, the translation in English, but definitely, you know, uh, doing in work and doing different, technique with you know uh, acid or just working with some oh gosh I should have prepared myself sorry I've got all the techniques word in French but I have to find them in English anyway so that was I've done that for a few years but very soon after I had my studio and I was I decided to to be a full-time artist I started to explore different techniques and I went really quickly on working with carbon random techniques. So the carbon random technique is actually a, a, a synthetic powder uh, of what we call fake diamonds, something very strong that you use in industry to polish metal pieces. Um, and that technique, it's basically, it's a powder mixed with some different kind of glue or acrylic medium and you create the past with it. And you apply that on your plate. And so instead of basically engraving your plate and making some hole where the, the ink will go and print after, transfer after to paper, you do the contrary. You create like a bar relief. So you had super structure to the plate. So I worked a lot with that. I developed different series. I will show you later one series of abstract land landscape I've done with Sheen, Colin, etc. So I was really into that work. When I start to travel, so when I left to um, Burma, I, I had to leave my studio behind and I arrived in that country with nothing. So the only things I could took with me was basically a box with my ink and with some wood chisel and that was it. So I decided to, to see if I could go back to relief print. I wasn't really relief print at that time because I was using a lot of my etching press. So I had a bit of time to adapt, to adapt to my new life to adapt to the new country, which I think you can guess is a fascinating country. I lived uh, four and a half years in uh, Yangon, um, in Myanmar, and I had a big house, I had a studio there, and it was extremely inspiring. Actually, the work that you see behind me is a continuation of a series I started there in 2006, 2007, and I went back to work on it, and I will explain later why. So I definitely uh, work with what I could find in the country. There is no printmaking studio, no printmaker. The country was at the time, the artist community at the time was extremely quiet because of the strong regime. I was there when Ansan Suki was still under house arrest. I basically left a couple of years before the country opened again and freshly shut down again, uh, which is super sad. But um, so there was nothing. There was no like big, uh, uh, art uh, store, you know, where you can just push the door and buy anything you want. So I was lucky that I had my um, hick with me and my chisel. So I just started to work on pieces of wood and engraved wood. And at that time, I was really inspired by the textile of the country. Burma has still have kept, you know, very well the tradition. And there's a lot of ethnic groups who live in the country because it's a country located between different with uh, as border with China, India, Thailand, uh, Laos, um, Bangladesh. So all the um, 
the different ethnic group who live at the border of the country basically are uh, between both, you know, uh, one step in Burma and one step in India, or one step in Bangladesh. So every ethnic group brings their own tradition. And you can really see that in their textile. And I think, I don't know if it's because I have a background in textile, but I'm really drawn by textile anyway. I, I collect some tech textile in every country where I go. I really love, you know, the, um, the technique of weaving and color, etc. So I was definitely drawn by that and I started a big series of work about that. And then, and then after Burma, I moved to West Africa and I continued to work in different ways and from West Africa, West Africa, two different countries in West Africa. And from West Africa, I went to basically just before we moved uh, in, um, in the US, we lived in Istanbul in Turkey. So that was again another culture shock. And, and it was, yeah, as you can guess, amazing. And I feel extremely blessed that I was able to travel so much and I had to experience all those um, culture. Uh, and uh, again, for my husband work, we moved to the US is basically was for another job that time. He, he quit his job as um, working for an international NGO. He was basically into uh, children's protection, children's rights. Uh, he went to it to philanthropy in the US and here we are now, we are in the US in the last eight years. And I had to, I guess, restart from the beginning. So I don't know if it's happened to some of you, but when you travel like that, unfortunately people, you know, you can't really keep contact with some people. When I was in Burma, I had no, there is no cell phone. This is a country with no cell phone. There is only few people who could have cell phone. The telephone wasn't working. Or if it was working, if you, you were under, you know, some people were on the other side and other line was listening to your conversation and there was no internet. So I had no internet at home. So I was definitely, you know, really far from old civilization, I would say. But, you know, never mind, you know, it definitely pushed you to be more focused on what you're doing. And that was, in a way, really good for me because I was into my work and also into discovering the, the country. But what I mean about that is when you leave, you know, people have a tendency to forget, to forget, to forget you at some stage. So when I moved here in the US, I had to, in a way, restart again. So it was like I was at the beginning of my career. And for one year, I didn't have my studio. My studio was in a warehouse, in a storage place, in the countryside in South, in South, South England. So I had to ship my studio back and I had to basically rediscover everything. And I was ready to it with my press. And I was, I was a bit crazy because it was like having my baby back. But at the same time, I was super, super scared to, to work with it again because I had to, I used to work in different other medium when I was traveling. And, and, and yes, and I was, what, what, I, what I wanted to say was basically I had to restart a bit my career from the beginning uh, when I moved here because suddenly I had access to social media. I had a cell phone. Well, I had a cell phone when I was in Turkey and I had a flip phone when I was in, in Western Africa, but I was, wasn't into social media. I had a small website, but, but it looks like it seems that it was super important when I came here to, to work with all those tools that I wasn't aware of. So I had to, you know, look at what, the other artist was doing and, and also navigate my way through the Philadelphia art community. Mm -hmm. And eight years later, I'm pretty happy, I can say. And, can and I I'm, ask I'm, you, how did you, how did you find ArtCan? I don't so remember. So I found ArtCan with a friend that you know, I found ArtCan, I think it was, I don't remember, it was in 2020, if it was just before COVID. Okay. Oh, it was during COVID, but I had, very funny, you know, it's happened sometimes. I had in my neighborhood um, a few years ago, a French artist who moved in my neighborhood from New York and called Laurence de Valmy, and, um, right. and you know her, yeah. and I know Kate knows her too. And Laurence is a very good friend. Basically, Laurence helped me a lot to navigate through social media. She's, ex she, she's super good and extremely experimented with all those technology, which I wasn't, and she was really generous with her time to, to help me. And in one of the conversations, she said, you know, I just applied for that group of artists in London. She also lived in London 
uh, when she was young and she said, you know, that might be interesting for you. And so I didn't apply soon after she applied, but one year later, in another conversation, she said, you know, I'm in that group, it's super nice, and it gives you the opportunity to, to speak with a large group of artists and to find the community, because we can be quite isolated in the States, mm. and we also like a little fish, you know, navigating in a huge ocean of artists. <laughs> so, um, and I guess because I had some nostalgia, maybe of London, or I had some great mem mem memories, and, um, and because my husband is British, she's not from, from London, from Surrey, but I used to go back every summer when my kids was young to see their grandparents, etc. I I thought that it would be definitely nice to be linked again with the country. Mm -hmm. So I applied, I was accepted. I had one show, which was during COVID, when you started, when you created the, the digital gal 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 gallery, oh, yes. the gallery online. I don't know why we call that, yes. Uh, and at that time, it was linked with a French, also um, a French uh, group of artists. Oh, La Condamine. La Condamine. La Condamine. La Condamine. Exactly. Yes, 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 yes. And yes, and I had the pleasure to exhibit uh, at, in New York last year. And yes, so um, yes, very nice, very nice. Unfortunately, yeah. with the time difference, it's not very easy for me sometimes to follow some of your online program just because it's yes. super early for me in the morning or just midday when I, I don't know, I have to drive a kid to his, you know, soccer practice, but it's not like that anymore. It used to be like that, but I still have a daughter. Which now, actually, my son is in university in the UK. He's at uh, Kent University and um, Canterbury and my daughter will graduate uh, in two years. So maybe we will leave the, maybe we, maybe, I'm not sure, we will leave Philadelphia. So we we'll see. Back and to I the think UK. I spoke, <laughs> yeah, maybe, I, you know what, my, since Brexit, my husband yeah. is less keen on coming back. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And actually now he quits his job in the US, he's working for himself and his main client is in Dubai. Oh. So who knows, you know. One so the country we might to visit, of, explore, yes. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to go to Dubai, but you know, we never know. We'll see. Or maybe, maybe somewhere in Europe. Maybe we'll be best somewhere in Europe. You know, I'm. It's it's funny because now I feel quite anchor here. I'm not a nomad anywhere anymore. So I feel oh okay. I I will have to get to used to the idea of of maybe moving. But and you know, I think you know, while I was uh, right. yeah while you were explaining all your you know travels and then. Um, starting again all over. I think it's just amazing how you have, you know, managed to carry on with your art practice because, like you said, I don't have materials. How do I go about it? But then you find, you know, the energy and you find the ideas and and you and you do it as an artist. You feel the need to do it. So that's yes, you, just amazing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's true. It's true. I think when it's definitely your passion. Uh, it's there's some moment of doubt, of course. There's some moment of difficulties. I won't lie. When I move, when I have to leave my big studio in France, and I had a tiny room in an apartment in London, I really struggled. It was super mm. difficult. I was struggling because I had a baby boy, and I, at that time, we had only one salary, and you know, you know, London life, and so, yeah. it's still super crazy. And so we couldn't afford any childcare for my son, so it, it was difficult. So I was basically working a little bit when he was napping. But as you know, you know, a kid won't nap all day long. <laughs> but then your practice so needs definitely... space, isn't it? You need yes, to, if, yes. yeah, yeah. So yeah, luckily I was able to find a child manager for two days a week. And I can tell you in those two days, I was working crazy. <laughs> and I think I was doing the same amount of work that I was doing when I was in my studio in France with no kids and having all time for me. But, you know, it's good because you learn, you learn, you know, uh, how to work in those conditions in a way to shape you after to work in different ways. But I'm, I guess I was always curious. It's in my character to be curious. 
I used to travel as a young artist and I went to backpacking in India and doing things like that or, or, or Southeast Asia countries. So I was definitely keen of, of you know, going uh, to different countries and discover them. There's definitely challenge, you know, it's yes, there's definitely mm. challenge of, you know, Would language you like and climate. Would but you like to show us something, yeah. Work. Yes, there's definitely a challenge with your work because you have to adapt. And when I left, when I left London to 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 Burma, I was into a, a, a series of basically being inspired by the the um, uh, architecture landscape of London after being into uh, some very soft color. Uh, atmosphere of seascape, etc. I was doing that a lot, and I will show you some later. Uh, I went into some something very monochrome, red, red color, very graphic, and really inspired by by uh, maybe because I was living at that time uh, on the south bank of London, because there was a lot of development coming out. There is the Tet Modern was newly uh, open. There is a lot of uh, building construction all around, etc. Et so I was super expi- inspired by that. And I was really into that series. You know, it, uh, some artists know that when you start a new series of work, it takes some months, sometimes some years before you feel very comfortable in it. So I would just write at the beginning of fully appreciating it when suddenly we moved and I had to leave everything behind. And I went in a country which was such a cultural shock. I couldn't mm-hmm. be inspired the same way because I wasn't into London anymore. And so I continued with the red color because I was still, you know, really um, into, it was really into me, but I transfer it with basically relief print and being inspired of textile. There was a tribe I met in Burma uh, very early on after I moved called the Karen tribe. Um, were very persecuted by the regime, uh, used to be persecuted, but still are persecuted. But they're weaving their fabrics and they were long white and red tunic. So it's basically stripe of red and red and white uh, with a little bit of, of embroidery. And that really struck my eyes thinking, okay, I can transfer technique of printing, but still keep the red. So for me, it was, you know, it's, 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 yes, uh, it was comfortable to know that I could still keep a little bit of my previous series, but in a different way, totally different because both series are totally di- different. But that was, yes, super important. So it's what I've done uh, every time I was moving to a country to another. I was trying to, to find bridges from the, from the previous country to the new country. So when I moved to Asia, to uh, West Africa, of course, it was totally different. Everything was different, but I was so much into that dark, uh, that dark blue indigo color when I left Burma. That was great because in West Africa, they're still dying with indigo. There's still a culture of dying with indigo. So I was able to, yes, to, to definitely create bridges like that in my series of work. And from Africa to Turkey, that was a big change. Um, I had no studio at all in Turkey. I had a little room uh, uh, in the kind of an attic, so the ceiling was super low. So I decided to just leave all, leave all the um, printing work on the side and I went back into painting. And I've done some mm. small painting onto paper. And I went back onto the, the skyline of the architecture landscape of a city because I was right in the city. You know, Istanbul is definitely as a feel of Europe. You know, it's definitely between two continents, but Istanbul itself can, if you're not in the historic park, can feel really, really European. And uh, so I've, I went back on series of um, landscape, of architecture, of city land landscape, but in a painting way. So different ways and, and doing collages, et cetera, and not in red and not, not, not monoprints. And, uh, and then the U.S. again, and for another U.S. again, and then we moved again. And, and in the U.S., it took me also a bit of time to be inspired. So actually, and as you know, and I'm sure, fortunately, I don't have samples here in my studio downstairs because I've got, I have to say, I have another place upstairs when I keep all my paperwork. So all, when the work is finished, 
I have a, a room which is climate control where I keep all my work, all okay. the finished work, all the work frame I kept upstairs. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I look around. I'm not sure I've got a work to show from that series. But the series I exhibit at Crow New York was actually the first series that I developed when I moved in the U.S., which was definitely inspired by architecture, modern architecture, uh, how buildings are built in the U.S., uh, except that instead of being red, they're all gray, I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> Philadelphia <laughs> looks gray for me. Um, but I would definitely go back to that series. I really want to go back uh, on working on that series anyway. And so I guess I will give you a quick tour. So what are you studio. doing now? What what projects have you got on? So the project, so the work that you're saying behind me. So actually, I developed a big series of big indigo circle printed by hand, which is really print. So it started by engraving big plywood of, of mm. big plywood, a uh, plank of plywood, and ink them by hand and printing onto unmade mulberry pepper. So I found some unmade mulberry pepper, beautiful pepper in um, a little village. There's only one place, a little town in northeast of Burma who are specialized at making that paper in one of my travel in the country, visiting the country. And I will show you some sample of the paper. It's a fascinating paper and it's the only place on earth who make it, which is amazing. Really rare. <laughs> but so I've done that big series of, of circle inspired of a pleated skirt that I came that I saw during one of my trek in the in the country. It's a long it's a long story, but I made a big series of work, which is basically relief print printed on, the, on that paper, and it's all superposition of prints and combined monoprint. And there's also superposition of of uh, paper on top of each other. So I would say superposition of of plate when I print for the process, but also superposition of of and you will understand because I've got some on my wall, so I will show them to you. But also superposition of print. And after I, I basically um, uh, stitch them to, together. And so it's it's it can be three dimensional sometimes. And that series was super successful, really really successful. Uh, there is only one art gallery in Rangoon when I was living there, run by an Australian lady, and she organized a big show. Uh, and I sold most of the work there and that was it and I had as some of you know when you're a printmaker you print a lot and because it's work on papers there's always some remaining work that you're not using or work that you're not feeling strong enough but me I'm a keeper definitely I like to keep things when I move I get rid of everything but for the moment when I'm working on the series, I always keep all my pieces of paper because you never know, you can reuse it. You know, I'm, I'm really into recycling in my work. I don't know if I, it's something I learned because I was living in countries where there is nothing, nothing to buy really. And so I had to recycling plank of, yeah, plank of plywood. I had to, so it was, yeah. And pepper, when I was in Burma, there was no fun art pepper. I was basically working on the pepper I had for my, like, like newsprint, for example, or, you know, um, wrapping pepper. Um, so not, not definitely not, not smart pepper at all, but you learn how to work with them. And, and it's great because it's definitely push you towards new technique, new approach of printing. So that series was super su successful. And actually in 2018, I had an interior designer who contacted me through Instagram, who saw some photos of that work and who said, uh, I want some, uh, we, I'm working on a hotel in Arizona and I need a certain number of prints for that hotel. And I thought, mm, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not, you, you know, when you have so, such a gap between series of work and that series, I stopped working on, on it. On, I would say 2007, I had some extra prints. So when I was in West Africa, I continued, but in a different way. But the last, last print I'd done, or the last assemblage when I stitched all the print together was in 2012. And I thought, you know, I'm not sure because there is some, such a big gap into that creativity. I think I cannot, I think I cannot go back on it. But, you know, I'm also, I like to be challenged in my work. So I said, why not? And I took some time to basically re-engrave a plate, 
and be into that mood. So it, so I'm not sure it was worth the money I had, but but I really wanted to feel confident in that theory before I was able to really offer a good creative work to the person. And, and I've done that, and I've done some tiny samples for the client, which is the size of the one you've got behind. Can you she show us those? Uh, can you show that? Yeah. It was, it was more into earth tone colors. So that's, that's more like into, uh, the paper is transparent, so you've got the light behind. I will show, uh, let me see if I can show it with, with the paper background. So it's really radiant line that I engrave, and here's a, a print and a monoprint, and I will yes play onto superposition, and so I've done that for that hotel. It was a huge success. The interior designer was super happy with it, and since I never stopped. Every right. everybody wants some. Everybody wants some, and I feel a bit. I've done the two past years. I worked a lot. I redeveloped a huge series. It's it a good was position to, to be in. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, I think it was just the time for that story to to be, you know, on the stage again, if I can say. And so uh, that story was exhibited at um, Affordable Art Fair, the spring uh, session last year. It was super successful. Uh, I had it exhibited at Art on Pepper, which is a very nice uh, fair in New York, specialized only on work on paper with big galleries so it's a different it's um different at affordable art fair it's um what it's, is it called um, again it is called art on paper it's art linked paper. during the armory week so it's all during that week in new york when you got all the art fairs mm. um it's only based in new york i think they don't do or maybe they've got i don't know i don't want to say yeah I don't want to be wrong, but uh, I think it's only in in uh, in New York. And um, and yes, and I have I have to work with other interior designer. I provide some for a luxurious boat, uh, a cruise company in France. I have been contacted with um, interior designer, American interior designer, based in Greece, but working for Vietnam and they're building a new hotel and they might want, yes, that might not happen, but they contact me for 240 pieces. And I say, what? That's very good. <laughs> 240 <laughs> pieces? I'm not sure I can do that. You'll be anyway, busy I send them a yeah. I said, yeah, I will have to make a creative factory, which it's, I'm not sure I want to do that. Anyway, you can't say no. I will never, I never say no. I say yes. And after we work out for it. So at the moment we're working on that, we might just do photo reproduction because, you know, people always have great ideas, but when it comes to money, you know, it's not the same. It's not yeah. the same. Right? So we'll see. And I will definitely show them to you closer because there's a lot of details to look at it. I've got some on the wall, I've got some finished. I have one which is not finished. And I will show you also my other work because yeah. in between printing like that, I like to have some break and I like to be back at painting. So uh, in 2000, 2000, uh, sorry, in 2003, in 2021, I, had, I made a big series of mm -hmm. painting onto monoprints. So I basically mounted got, my monoprints got, canvas. Um... I've got a comment on the chat from Pernilla and she says it would be lovely to see example of work that bring two different cultures together from yes, the country yeah, yes. you lived in. Yes, no, I, will definitely, I think it's time yeah. because I think I speak in too long and, and people might be bored. So <laughs> yeah, we have about 15 minutes left. Yeah, so let me, let me change. Thank you, Pernilla. Back. Yeah, let me, okay, so oh, yeah, you, here, you can see the studio. So here is the studio. That's my uh, working table when I do all the, the ink work. This is the ink that I'm using. I'm using some typography ink. Uh, big jar. Those are still from France because I used to buy a lot. Uh, but I'm also looking, uh, that's it. I'm also using those kind of ink and some charbonnel. I might have some charbonnel, some charbonnel one when I do my mixing. I've got, yeah, all the briars here. 
all the tools, etc. And yes, and on that wall, we've got so actually those, I made those recently, and they are quite basic prints. But we can see on that one that there's two different prints on top of each other. We can see on the top one, there's three prints. You know, there's a blue, a light brown, and a dark brown or dark gray here. Uh, so that's really what I'm doing. But those were actually, I've done them very simple and they're actually scan. And this is what wow. I'm doing with it, which that is just a sample. The, the work is now, I can't show you the work because the work went to New York for affordable art fair. Because actually affordable art fair, it's next week in New York. All right. So I'm basically scanning them and I'm doing a negative and I'm working on the negative to do a series of digital prints because the gallery had the original one, but she wanted something a bit different. And I wanted also to, to explore the negative side of that work. And, um, and those, those are all little samples. But I, you know, as I said earlier, I keep all my samples because I can play with it. So I will keep one and I can stitch it on top of that one and I'm adding some stitching work. And here I've got, I've got a tiny plate. I, I can't show you the big plates because I don't have them in the studio here, but so the, that plate is actually a linoleum and is basically engraved with a laser. So I'm now not really cutting my, I would say engraving myself, it's laser engraving. And I do different one and I just play with the different radiant line. So that's, um, and the linoleum works very well with, um, with laser. So that's, uh, that's super nice. And, and this is the other part of the studio. And you have, sorry, I've got, I've got my question. shoe box. Hi, uh, Hagati, I've got another question for you uh, from Pernilla. Um, uh, that's all lovely, thank you. Does the circle symbolize anything in particular for you? Yes, so the circle symbolized that pleated skirt that I came through one of my trek in Burma, uh, one of the tribe in not far from the Thailand and Lao border, we have some really um, deep indigo, um, indigo color skirts who are uh, pleated with tiny, tiny pleats. And I actually bought some of those uh, skirts. And when you basically lay flat on the floor, it's creating a big circle and all the pleats give an idea of radiant line. So of course it's my own interpretation. There's nothing, you know, you can't necessarily see a textile in it, but um, some are more abstract like that one on that table just a big monoprint but again you can see different color because i i use different different plate of different size so some looks like an eye or it can be organic like like a plant that it's a um only one stage so it means i i had only one print here but i will let another print and maybe a third or a fourth and that one, that one is actually is going to Japan. I have a collector in Japan and she bought that one. And on that one, you can see that there is one color in the background. So one print, a second print, and that just adds the stitching by hand here and has that tiny pepper. So sometimes I, most of the time I open the middle um, and this one is on the progress. This one is more it's a earth tone color. And you can see there's one print in the background. Oh, did I lose you? No, can no, you, can you see? Oh, yes. yes, yes. Yeah, sorry, suddenly my, my screen went black. And there's another print here and another third one and stitching. And so that one is in progress, it might change. Yes. And I also but, do so smaller one. And the smaller one, those, they those, look, those. It looks like eyes and irises are looking to one soul. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of people who said that there's some more abstract one where they're in brown color. They think it's like a, a, the, a tree, you know, a tree trunk where I've been cut and it's a print of it. And I really play with the color and they're all unique. They're all different. Oh, and on that one, for example, amazing. there's a lot yeah. of things going on. 
let me know if it's blur. I can't really see because my no, screen no, it's, is it's, it's tiny. Quite clear. No. Okay. Does good. anybody on the line have a question for Agathe or you know, would you like to know more about any particular work uh, that you see? Yeah, and I can go to the other side. Feel free to I join do. the conversation. And here we have different series of works. So, yes. so I I said earlier that I was working a lot with carbon plate and I was doing some landscapes. So the landscape that you see here is basically one of the, it was the work I was doing in the, at the beginning of the 20, uh, 21st century. So 20, this one might be 2005. So that, that's one of the last one. Oh. Sorry, my screen sometimes stop and become no, we Black. can see. We can see the table. We can see. Okay, let me. Yes. And so I've got some samples here. And actually, what I do with those prints, it's I really worked a lot with um, with also applying pepper between the plates. So the plate is inked, and before it goes under the press. Uh, I also apply pepper. And as you see, my work is always, I always work with color. I rarely do black and white. If I do black and white, it's mostly uh, when I want to do some test proof of the plate. So actually, this print was uh, inked in sepia, and I had a brayer with that very transparent, sorry, transparent gray, um, gray, bluish color, but also a pepper here. And that plate, I'm not sure if it's the same plate of that one, but I have, yeah, I have different, I'm trying to show them. On, and that's another one. So I'm really, you know, I like to do unique work. I'm not traditional, as I said earlier, I'm very traditional in my printmaking practice because I really like to, I like creating the plate, but after I like to play with it and I really like to, to change the, the color and the atmosphere. So if it's a serious landscape like that one, I like to, with the same plate, give it a feel like that it's early evening or mid afternoon or, or winter light. Or, or So it's, um, yes, it's the way I work, I guess, you know. <laughs> I like to be, um, yeah. to, to, to change. I don't like the certain routine. And I, I've got for you the plate so I can, I can show you how is my plate. So that's my plate. I'm sorry, the light is a bit strong here. So this is, this is a carbon job. So what I'm doing, what I was doing at that point, I was working on re recycling kind of plexiglass or um, a, a plastic sheet. And what I'm doing, what I've done here, is I'm mixing the carbon dome with different mediums that I apply like a barrier. I have different acrylic gels that I apply. And, and when the texture is still fresh, I'm using some tools like, like sculpture tools or a knife or things like that to really create some some texture. And I, I don't know if you can see the yeah, texture can, a bit because yeah. there's yeah. some reflect, but you can see it. And all that basically- Because some green, is, yeah. Well, the color is because the plaque is dirty. It mm -hmm. used to be trans, trans, transparent, but you can, you can, yeah, there's a bit of texture. And this is why after when you print, if you look at the back, the, the back is a tiny, well, we can't see because the light is unfortunately not very good, but it's definitely when you touch it, you can freeze the, the texture on the plate. So there's, there's one here. And recently I created that series I made for an exhibition I had in a gallery. I, I had a gallery representation in Philadelphia. I, I, I just stopped with them because now I have somebody in New York, but uh, I made that, that exhibition, that, um, new series called uh, Vue de la Vitre in French, which could be translated by Through the Window. And here it's monoprint. So it's very abstract stripe of monoprint that I applied onto canvas. And I'm, I'm playing with, uh, after acrylic layers, a very light color, transparent of color on top of it to add some depth to the, um, to the series. And it's all my interpretation of what you see through a window. So this is why it's abstract landscape. Mm -hmm. It's more atmosphere colors. This one, it's, you know, uh, just mm -hmm. before 
uh, the night, uh, the 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 the, uh, the sky became mm -hmm. dark. We have some smaller one here. It's uh, people love that series. It was um, shown a few times. I might see it again for a gallery outside of Philadelphia this spring. But mm -hmm. you know, to come back to my textile love, I have also some few little work, a tiny <laughs> series I've done. You know, as I said earlier, I never, I never. Um, <laughs> You recycle everything. <laughs> my work. And here it's definitely a mix of textile and prints. So it's basically tiny, tiny uh, uh, paper stripe of print mixed with fabrics, with gold leaves. I made my own little weaving and I really played with creating kind of fragments of fabrics, a bit like, mm -hmm. um, yes. And it's all related to our skin. It's called, this one's called second peau in French, which is second skin. And it's definitely really related to how our mm -hmm. skin can be, can be, uh, can heal after trauma and uh, and the delicateness of the skin. And that's another part of the studio. <laughs> Great. I've got a just, lot of uh, things I wanted here. to say, we've got just a couple of minutes left on our time. Um, just, yes. um, yeah, just wanted to ask the everybody on the line, if you've got any particular question, just ask away before we say goodbye. And we thank you, Agatha, for our time. It's a wonderful space. Quite yes, big. it's super nice. And I've got some great light. Um, but honestly, it took me some time to adapt just because it's a little bit low because it's a basement. The ceiling is a little bit low. I still I stand up. Everybody can stand up, but it's not super high. And uh, and I don't know. It's yes. <laughs> I guess I was blessed with big rooms and big lights. Pernilla, I mean, a lot of yeah, lights, Pernilla's got a question. Can you join the line, Pernilla? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Yes, I've written a question of love. I'm just really interested because I've lived in a number of countries myself and um, obviously taken inspiration. Um, I was born in Korea, but I grew up in Sweden and I lived in Singapore oh, wow. for many years. And I've been to these countries, Burma, Cambodia, and so on. So it's really interesting. I was just wondering about the similarities and divergences between the, in your art practice, between the Burmese, West African, and American cultures. Um, what you've taken from them that you can see if there are any similarities because they're really really just different, different cultures it would be interesting to hear so uh I'm, I'm sorry i'm not sure i couldn't hear you very well so you want to know what what inspired me in those countries or what i took from from them into my work sorry, can you hear me now sorry can you hear me can you hear me now yes Yes, wonderful. Now I was just wondering about, uh, well, thank you very much for the presentation, your beautiful studio. It's You're lovely welcome. to hear about it. <laughs> now, I was just wondering about the similarities between these different cultures so um, there's, so and how you brought it together in your art. Yes. And the differences. They're more clear, I guess. The differences. Yeah, yes. Is so, there anything you see? Yeah. Yeah. Similarity, I'm not sure. But there's definitely... Um, a certain re resilience in some people, and it's, it's uh, and it's, uh, I would say when I left Southeast Asia to to the African con continent, it was huge. People, of course, people are different. Everything is different, but there was a huge gap because it, when I was in Burma, I couldn't really, um, I couldn't communicate at all. I I took some classes of Burmese, but it was impossible. So basically, I knew how to count. I knew how to to explain my way with a ta ta taxi driver or something like that, but I couldn't have a conversation. And as I said earlier, the um, artist community, the art community was really underground in Rangoon at that time. So I didn't really meet artists. I met some, but people are extremely, I guess I would say shy. They're not shy, but because you are the foreigner, they are the oppressed people. I'm sorry, I make it extremely simple, but um, just to explain. They were so oppressed that they thought that if, you know, we could be a danger for them because communicated with, I would say the enemy uh, would have been great for them. So I didn't, during my old years living in Burma, unfortunately, I didn't really meet with the art community. I met some of them, but some of the famous artists were 
while he was in jail or were basically uh, in Singapore, um, you know, had escaped the country a long, long time ago. So unfortunately, that's something I definitely missed, but that's something I definitely found when I was, I basically lived in Ivory Coast and after I lived in Senegal, in Dakar, and uh, I didn't stay very long. I stayed only one year in Ivory Coast, but when I was in Dakar, I left, I lived for two years. And I had a lot of um, interaction with artists there. And it was great. I was able to go to artist studio to see them walking. We had some art, you know, artist conversation, art conversation. And, and to come back to, to how me, I was able to, to link my work from a continent to another because it's definitely a change of continent and, and culture. What I found really interesting for me was that because I was rocking, as I said earlier, with that indigo color, which is super important in the Indian country, um, it's also still, you know, used in some of the country in West Africa. In Mali, they still die. Uh, of course, that um, they don't use. Um, I can't. Sorry, I will go back to the. Yeah, sorry. Unfortunately, they do not use. Um, oopsie, sorry. Oh, sorry, I miss you. Anyway, no, yes, we, unfortunately, we they you. do not use. <laughs> my, my things, oh, sorry. Oh, when, sorry, sorry about that. So I have to, it's on my iPad, so I have to hold it quite high. So yes, I, I couldn't, I would say the indigo color was super important because I, I could definitely link the work with that color. But I worked dif differently. It wasn't inspired by textile. It was much more abstract. It was just plain indigo color. I was basically working with the dye itself and painting with the dye. So I was mixing technique. Um, and and as you know, as artists, you know it's when you move like that so often. You also need some time to set your family, and that was my priority. So sometimes it took me a year to get to to get to know the country, to get to know, to basically set a new routine for me and the kids and etc. So it's after when all, all that was basically, um, I, I was sure that everybody was doing well, that I was able to work. So sometimes I had only one year in front of me to create something. So I had to be quick. I had to think quick, if I can say, and find ideas. So this is why I was definitely doing those bridges and linking, uh, country with another or a series with another. And, and, and for sure, most of the time it was with the color I was using in the previous series of work. So this is why when I arrived in West Africa, and I don't have samples to show you the whole wrap, it's for sure it's all in bubble wrap, but uh, it's, um, it's still really into that indigo color. Because in Mali, in Burkina Faso, not I was able to find um, a Malian guy in Dakar who still we were doing a traditional dye. And unfortunately, as I wanted to say earlier, they don't do, they don't use the plants, the, the pastel, the indigo itself. They use chemical, but it's still super, super nice. It's still super interesting to work with. So, and I definitely want to explore more of that. And then just buy some indigo dye because I want to explore into fabrics. And I, so my process never stops. So sometimes it's, can be overwhelming for people because <laughs> I'm bursting of ideas and uh, and 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 I find that I don't have enough time. But it's um, yes, I guess it's the way I am. And uh... well, thank you very very much. Um, I was interested to hear a little bit about the American cultures, but um, great. So the common denominator is the indigo color, basically, for you. Uh, it was in the go between Asia and Africa. Um, I'm back to it because of that series I developed in, uh, in Burma. But um, I want to go back to work with bright color. I, you know, but definitely since the last 15 years, I would say I was really into more earth tone colors. And I think I was mm. always into those colors. Um, it's beautiful, your work. The landscapes were really lovely. It's thank lovely you very see. much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, me too. And, uh, and yes, Thank if you. you want to contact me through social media, email, you can follow me on Instagram. 
it's under my name, Agatha Fulton. And yes, you've got everything on my website and, and I will be, and you can, yes, you can call me, whatever, you know, I will be happy to share more if you want to know more about techniques or different things. And if some of you are traveling to New York next week, let me know as well. We'll be at Affordable Fair, Affordable Art Fair in New York starting on Wednesday next week. And maybe in London in October. Who knows? Yeah. I will let you know. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for your time. It's just amazing what you've been, you know, narrating. It's wonderful. Thank well, you. Thank everybody. you for having yeah. me. Thanks everyone for joining us for this call. So um we'll save the recording and then if you're happy to we can put it on youtube as well for everybody to see later yes thank right. you very much for being patient with me i hope i was okay <laughs> thank yeah, you just wonderful thank you very much you bye so everybody much. bye Agatha. thank you bye bye have a nice time nice rest of your day thank you bye bye, bye.